Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we're going to talk about a new paper from Professor Joseph Bauer, which is a review of the recent paper from Dr. Yoshino with a wider view of the study of NAD metabolism and aging. We had an interview with Professor Bauer earlier. You can see the link above. First, let me briefly introduce Professor Bauer. Joseph Bauer is an assistant professor at the Perman School of Medicine of the University of Pennsylvania. He is one of the world's leading NAD researchers. Dr. Bauer performed his postdoctoral studies with Dr. David Sinclair at the Harvard Medical School, where he developed a strong interest in the regulation of aging and metabolism by sirtuins, which require NAD as a co-substrate. A major focus of his lab is on understanding how changes in NAD metabolism contribute to aging. Here is the paper, NAD Plus Metabolism and Cardiometabolic Health, The Human Evidence. Professor Bauer is one of the authors. And it is a commentary on Dr. Yoshino's paper related to the effects of NMN on diabetic or pre-diabetic women's insulin sensitivity. Here is the study by Dr. Yoshino. Nicotinamide mononucleotide increases muscle insulin sensitivity in pre-diabetic women. We reviewed the paper on our channel earlier. Dr. Bauer provides a brief overview of NAD why it is important and how our understanding of its functions have changed to include its role in epigenetic and transcriptional regulation. And as he says, there has been an increase in interest in the metabolism of NAD and its potential to treat chronic age-related diseases. NAD decreases with age, but exercise and caloric restriction do help increase the levels. So NAD has been proposed as a potential actionable target to provide some of the benefits of a healthy lifestyle. In fact, a growing body of preclinical evidence, mostly in mice, shows the various B3 derivatives such as NR and NMN improve metabolic health in aging obesity and diabetes. And he notes that human trials are lagging behind. With respect to this need, Dr. Yashino and his team conducted a trial and published the results in science. The trial was a randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blinded trial testing the short-term effects of NMN on body composition and insulin sensitivity in pre-diabetic women. There were 25 participants and the NMN dose was 250 milligrams per day. Note that milligrams per kilogram appears to be a typo, as the study it is milligrams per day. The headline result was that body weight and composition were not affected while insulin sensitivity was. In more detail, there was no effect on BMI, fat to lean ratio, or abdominal fat or liver triglycerides during the 10-week program. Also, it did not affect plasma insulin, glucose, HbA1c or cholesterol levels. However, the CLAMP test, which measures the rate of glucose infusion into blood which is required to keep the plasma glucose at an elevated level, showed an improvement in insulin sensitivity. The NMN group saw a 25% increase in glucose disposal rate. Interestingly, the NMN seemed to affect only the skeletal muscles and not the liver or fat. NMN did not improve muscle capacity or mitochondrial respiratory function. Numerous disorders are associated with NAD deficiency. But these trials use a much lower dose than that used in the mouse studies, even when using the normal adjustments. Professor Bauer questions whether these adjustments are correct in this case, as NAD turnover is the same in mice and humans, which would imply an even higher dose. Using a larger dose may have better effects, but also may be toxic to the liver, so a balance would need to be found. Professor Bauer discusses these last two points in our conversation with him. In the paper, there is a list of some of the ongoing trials for B3 derivatives. The list includes 14 active trials and shows the level of interest in NAD metabolism at the moment. It does not include some of the NMN trials, which are also in progress. In the conclusion, Dr. Bauer writes that NAD metabolism represents an exciting avenue to improve cardiometabolic health and perhaps extend lifespan in humans. 
He says that the findings support this potential, but further research is needed. It's good to see a positive review of this paper from Professor Bauer. The number of NAD-related trials which are ongoing is also encouraging. Hopefully, we will get better clarity on the effects of taking NAD boosters in the not-too-distant future. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.